Hello and welcome to the Amber Spycast, your one-stop shop for all things His Dark Materials. I'm Alaric and I'm joined with two amazing co-hosts. The first one is Travis. Travis, what's going on? What's up, guys? How are you? Very good. Good. Awesome. Just finished watching the show. Me too. Very excited to talk about it. <laughs> yep, yeah, me too. And then we have Joanna here. Joanna, how are you doing? Hey, yo. I am, I am well. I am still sort of reeling from the show. Like yeah. I like like we, we I just turned it off and now we're on. So yeah. I'm trying to gather myself again. I thought we were we were sort of gonna call these our still processing reviews because we literally are still processing. Yeah. Um, and we'd sort of also pitched maybe like next week at the top of the still processing review, we do a little like reprocessing of this week leading into next week, maybe to give us a little extra uh, in case we get some some additional insight throughout the week. And on second note, on uh, what is it? On second thought uh, section. Yeah. <laughs> right. So let's let's dive in. What are uh, what are your general sort of general general ablation board general um, <laughs> thoughts on how this how this played out? This was a this this is this they made some changes. They did. Oh yeah. That's that really. That's what stood out to me. That's almost the theme of this episode. Is like what they opted to do and how they dipped into the subtle knife, really, in uh -huh. this a uh -huh. little bit. I mean, a lot, much more than I thought they would. Yeah, I was giving them kudos and props last week for not sort of giving up the ghost about about. I mean, it's not even spoilers because it's in this episode. Um, these parallel worlds, this parallel world, which is our world, right? That Lord Boreal. Is passing between freely. Joanna, do you want to start? No, no I am just. <laughs> no, I don't want to start. <laughs> I don't want to start. I really don't. I feel like right now I can only react to something you say. Um, you know, I, there were. It's hard. I, I had the captions on when I was watching because I was trying to take notes as I was watching, and still trying to like enjoy and pay attention to it. Um, and there were a couple of times where I had to tell my husband, I was like, stop and rewind that, stop and rewind. <laughs> like, I just missed all these things that were going on. Um, but there were several times when I, we were watching it with my son, who's nine, and he said to me, he was like, is this the golden compass or the subtle knife? And I was like, well, <laughs> it's the golden <laughs> yes. compass. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, and it is the subtle knife. So if he picked up on that, I thought they were, they were very clear. Yeah. Very clear. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know that I'm overly keen on it. I don't know that I'm overly like I like the episode. Don't get me wrong, as a whole, but the adding the Lord Boreal jumping between worlds thing, I'm not overly keen on it because I kind of feel like it's going to undercut the impact of what Osriel does at the end. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, take away, you know, spoilers of the subtle knife and how Lord Boreal plays out in that. And then how, he, how he crosses paths with our heroes and how mm -hmm. that sort of, how that plays out, take that completely off the table. And yeah, the, the splitting of the worlds is the culminating moment of this. I would assume series one, the, right. the absolute largest moment. Everything is leading to that. Mm -hmm. Is that a spoiler? Uh, I think it's Okay. Is it? Is it? I'm just checking. I thought we were only doing what was in this episode, and that felt like a spoiler to me. I feel like we we can spoil up to what we, because whoever's listening to this should have listened to the, our other podcasts, <laughs> Monsters, if you haven't. This is this is episode 21, so exactly. okay. I just, season three. Take exactly. note that I was looking out for those of you that maybe had it only listened to the to the TV show one. All right, fair enough. I'll put yeah. it in the uh, I'll put it in the show notes that we uh, we go into some spoiler territory. <laughs> okay. Put a tag on the front. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, you're you are dipping. We're, we're dipping our toe into the subtle knife, even just more than a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just Boreal being such a major character is even still like all we ever see him in the in the Golden Compass is at the party. Right. Mm -hmm. But they and did fix something with that that made me happy. Lyra uh, did not meet him at the party. That's right. So the the recognizing him is not an issue. Yes, that's right. I yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I worked with that. You know, so 
going back to sort of how this all how this whole episode feels and and something I wanted to give it major credit for is that I thought the I thought that Mrs. Coulter's apartment and Lyra's experience in the apartment this one episode is absolutely suffocating. Mm-hmm. It's a very much like everything feels close and you're nervous all the time. And even at the very beginning of her time there, it feels sort of like oppressive, sneaky, mm-hmm. oppressive and every little thing. And it's very quiet. There's very little score. It feels like very close. You can hear every little sound in the entire apartment. And and Ruth Wilson's really nailing this in a lot of ways. She's oh my God. Yeah, she's. Yeah mysterious dark she changes emotion so quickly and she has this strange little like hmm, that she does like at the her little like thought you know this moment where she sits mm-hmm. and she goes hmm, she that's like her thing and and the her golden monkey really shines quite a bit here too uh and how creepy his ass is mm-hmm. <laughs> for real yeah that that monkey at no point did i not get creeped out by that monkey every time he showed up on screen yeah. Um, I mean, when we heard the skittering in the in the pipes, I thought that might be the monkey. It made sense that it was the monkey, but was, you know, I was also kind of concerned. Well, maybe up the, and, and they they've changed it and they've put the kids upstairs in the building, and she never finds out, you know. But That's right. it it was the monkey the whole That's time, right. and the kids are downstairs, right <laughs> in right. the basement, <laughs> right. So okay, so we're 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 tearing through this here. So the monkey can go. Far away from Mrs. Coulter. Yes. What the like heck? Really what? Far. Like really far. Yeah. Mrs. Coulter was at the other end of the hallway, and the monkey was in the study. So that's at least I mean, it was it was a good chunk of time, and that it was enough to Lyra didn't like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was like she, she was, was really out. spooked out by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's I thing. wondered because I never got the sense that they were that far apart in the book. No. I always you know felt like they were far that there were maybe points when they were a little further than usual. But they were far, mm-hmm. and um, my my first thought was: Is Mrs. Coulter like part witch? You know, like is she somehow able to to ha- separate from the from the 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 demon? But then I realized some other things that I know are going to come later that I won't spoil. Yes. Or has she been? Has she gone through a procedure? Is there something that she's done to herself to allow for that to happen? Yeah, because there were a couple moments when she just got like this like thousand yard stare and I thought, you know, she's broken somehow. And she's then a, when she slapped the monkey. Yeah. You know? She's a, she's emotionless. She she has she's emotionless. It's almost like she's playing at emotion when she's mm-hmm. showing emotion, like almost like she doesn't really feel emotion. She's just putting on a a, a performance. Yeah. But she doesn't really feel much anymore. Maybe that's like a, an ability sociopaths in that world have. Their demons can travel far away because they don't have a real connection to them. Um, so Lyra's world has some legit cars, too, like full out cars. Yeah. Regular cars. Yeah. Um, it's really it's funny cool. to listen to them the day after Watchmen because you, they, they have that same. So. A little like, yeah, it's running on something different. Yeah, exactly. Doctor Manhattan is in uh, Liar's World. Um, the uh, we get to see a little bit of behind the scenes with um, the gobblers and what the kids are going through, uh, mm-hmm. which we peek, get a little more of a peek, certainly more than the film gave us, and we get um, we get Roger and Billy together. Yep. Um, and some significant moments there. And also uh, we learn that they're being moved quite a bit so that nobody can find them. No one can sniff them out. And right. the Egyptians are legit on the, like hot on the trail, so hot on the trail that they seem to have gotten to the place where they're keeping them right after they get moved. Yeah. They're one step behind, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but close. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How you yeah, feel about Ma? How you feel about Ma right now? Just to, what do you think about her character? I know we were sort of a little iffy about her in season, in episode one. I mean, so far, like she's really doing the whole, you know, mother who lost her child uh, performance really well. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's it's it's pretty powerful. Every time you know she starts to feel it, I mean, I feel it for her. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the the guy who's playing Tony is also doing a really good job. Um, 
But uh, what do you guys think about the uh, the way John Fa and Ma Costa um, the, the forehead, the forehead? To yeah, yeah. Like yeah. My, I wondered is you know John Fa his pa. In this I mean they, that was familiar. Yeah, was very. That was familiar. like that was more familiar than I'm the leader of all the Egyptians. Familiar, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so then I was like, well, yeah, it lingered for a long time, and hands were held. Exactly. It was. I. I mean, it implied to me something different. Right. And if perhaps he, he is. You know, maybe he is Billy's dad. I don't know. In here. And if he isn't, maybe the king has a sort of spiritual role in their community as well. Mm -hmm. Um that sort of binds the community in that way. It's, it's possible. Maybe. But I certainly yeah. was like, huh, they, mm, that's, mm, you know, right. that was, that kind of, that stood out to me for sure. I have to give the Egyptians kudos here for their representation, not just of people of color that are kind of just interspersed, but also people with differing abilities. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes me really happy that people are represented. And, and it's interesting because, you know, it's exactly who the Egyptians are. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's they exactly embrace. who the Egyptians are. Right. Yeah. So there, so, but I really loved, I really loved how you could, you know, any one person maybe could look up and see themselves at some time watching that. Mm -hmm. And that made me, that made me happy. Mm -hmm. And seeing that they would have a place in that world, not just, not some kind of outcast or whatever. They have, right. they have a real place in that world. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that would, that's awesome. So I, I know we want, we kind of blazed past it into like, it's hard to know how to talk about this because like you want to talk about it all at once. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that, you know, so I guess my first question is, and this was a big issue. I won't say contention, but there was some, there was some back and forth. on how much time do you think was spent in Mrs. Coulter's apartment here before she went? Do you, do you gentlemen feel like you had, did it feel like it was enough time this time? Or did you still feel like it was not quite that length of time? I felt like there was enough time for them to have built a relationship this time. Like I felt like the, there was a, enough of a montage for us to uh, kind of understand, okay, there, some time has passed. I don't think it was as long as I thought it may have been. Like I, I thought you know we were like at six weeks or something before, but I think maybe we were at like maybe two or three, you know, tops. Mm -hmm. yeah, tops. Yeah, yeah, that feels right. Yeah. Well, yeah, she gets there, and you know they they have the bathing scene, which feels like it's very early on in the in the relationship before they go to the Arctic Institute, which they have a moment there very early on where they mm -hmm. she still has affection and she's still kind of like wowed by Mrs. Coulter. You know, Mrs. Coulter also, I I don't know if you caught this line and it made me laugh, but. She talks about having her best people on this, like looking for Roger project. It reminded me of the she sent her four fastest ships, you know, yes. from uh, right. Princess <laughs> right. uh, You know, it's like, um, you know, you know, she's not really looking for him. Uh, I I like that. And then they, and then they get into the schooling and the studious part of their relationship, where she's sort of like trying to mold her a little bit more, mm -hmm. and she has the fitting for her dress for the party. There's there's some time passing here. I think it's mm -hmm. it's it's palpable. But I don't think it's six weeks. It it's maybe a couple weeks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's fair. So you know, you brought up that bathing scene, and um, there's a point that that really got got me in there when um, Lyra started to give her one of her Lyra stories about, oh, I use my long hair as a rope, and she and and Mrs. Coulter says, Lyra, please don't lie to me, and she yanked her hair just a little bit. A little bit. Just enough that, you know, you know that she's not messing around. Mm -hmm. And Pan got it. Lyra Pan did got it. But Pan did. Pan yeah. almost in maximum cute mode, too, like standing on the side of the of the of the tub. Yes. Like as cute and a little button nose as you can get. On, little on. white Pan is so freaking adorable. So adorable. Oh, my God. If uh, I don't get a stuffed version of him soon. <laughs> <laughs> in that scene... The monkey is sitting with his back to the tub. I like that touch. Oh yeah, seething. Yeah, yeah. I he mean, was just resentful. so mm -hmm. angry and upset. Like mm -hmm. she was doing that, um, which made which made later in the episode the slap a, a lot more meaningful. 
Mm-hmm. Like it felt in the movie, it felt a little out of the blue, although I liked it. Mm-hmm. Like I yeah. love, I liked that touch a lot, but it kind of felt out of the blue. There wasn't really this sense of it, but there, it gave this sort of, you know, descent between them at times. And so when she smacks him again in this one, it was like, it was like a perfect, you know, fit. Yeah, there's a real contentious relationship between uh, Mrs. Coulter and her monkey. Because later, uh, during the, the scene um, in the when she's coming up the elevator and, and Lyra's in the study, uh, which I can't wait to talk about, the monkey ta- looks at her and looks scared. Just looks scared of her. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's just like all the implications of having, you know, the personification of your soul be something that you have a contentious relationship with, Mm -hmm. like so much so that it's afraid of you Mm -hmm. is really neat and kind of takes me back to that whole sociopath thing. Yeah. And I think it takes, Oh, go ahead. uh, I was also also thinking that, uh, you know, we also have to remember that the monkey knows who Lyra is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, I'm going to stop talking because we haven't gotten to that part of the show yet, but uh, Yeah. Well, and it made me think what I was going to say was it made me think something you said in, in our podcast about the books, which is like it, it, it's like this self, it's almost like self-loathing the way she treats the monkey. Mm-hmm. Like she like it's this self-loathing that she has and she takes it out on him, um, you know, keeps her composure, but she'll she'll kind of take it out on him. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it felt like that. Again, it was actually a really good because there's multiple times where like there's this one time in the episode where she when she well. You know what? Why don't we talk about it when we get to it? But the end of the at the end of the uh, study scene, yeah. And you know, there's a part there where like the monkey is acting a certain way, and it was in mm-hmm. a positive way. Um, right. But yeah, maybe I'll wait to talk yeah. about it then. Okay. Um, do we want to talk a little bit about the master and boreal scene where? the master goes to see or the Lord Boreal goes to see the master and is asking about Grumman's skull. Yeah. Uh, firstly with that, is that the, uh, church where Harry and Megan got married? Huh. I'm really convinced that that's the, the place where they got married. Um, because you know, I, I was up at seven o'clock in the morning that day with my whole family watching that. And, uh, I've got no shame. <laughs> And that room just really screams of that. And it it certainly really could be, yeah. If that was uh, an alternate unis- universe version of uh, that place. So he, he comes to get, he wants to see uh, Grumman's head, and they had thawed it and cleaned it and put it in the crypts, but he wasn't going to let him see it anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's, there's some great visual work here where um, Boreal is praying, and when the master comes in, the master's demon flies over his head uh, when he's like bowed down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and almost for a second, I'd forgot that Boreal had a snake demon. I thought it was his yeah. demon just for a second. And I remember, oh, no, he has a snake. And then uh, the master puts up his arm and it's like huge bird lands down and it's like cawing, you know, and like kind of threatening in a threatening manner. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but, you know, Boreal is the expansion of his character and the expansion of his role here. And and also the master is being greatly expanded here. You know, the master was essentially we're done with the master, right? Yep. We're like we've moved on from the master in the book. So coming back to him and seeing that he's still sort of um, protecting his interests and being careful, and uh, uh, Boreal's and and the Magisterium is kind of like messing with Jordan a little bit. They want, you know, they're they're mad at him and they're they're exposing him for funding Azriel's research. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's all right there on the screen. There's no like, it's it's right there. They say yeah, it. no no subtext. Yeah, it's like right. <laughs> I, they, he just said it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're mad. Um, right. And then the, a more magisterium action is our um, the cardinal, which is this guy is acting with a capital A, mm-hmm. like shuffling in, um, being super. What was his demon? A wasp. Oh yeah, yeah, a wasp was this is right by yeah. his face. Yeah, oof. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, but I did. I did kind of like the skink or the salamander or whatever that um, that the priest has. Uh, it, oh, it's, um, it's like Father a, McPhail. Yeah, Father McPhail has like a little lizard that's mm-hmm. kind of like on his back and moving around all the time. Like I really mm-hmm. like this. If if there was complaints last last episode about not enough demons, 
I, there was real demon representation. There here. was a lot. Visible mm-hmm. demons. Everybody had them. And even Boreal makes a comment later when he's when he's like, oh, where's the snake? And he's like, we don't have our, our demons on display all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <He's right>. like, <laughs> shut again, down. right? He, he, just, yeah, he, he, just, he just shut down the Twitter boards. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, and actually, there were so many this episode that I kind of thought, you know, they must have an issue with seating in this world because um like you in the explorers club somebody had their uh their wolf or dog sitting in a chair at the table and um i just thought you know if you've got to have seating for all of the for people and their demons my gosh would rooms get crowded and it kind of would make sense to me why the world isn't as populated as ours would be yeah, I, I could, yeah, it's certainly, you know, it, it's, they have a, you know, if, it's like, in our world, it's like party of one, like you're sitting by yourself, but this it's world is like, two. you always have party of two, no matter what, but I guess if it was a wasp, it would not be that big a deal. Yeah. So it kind of depends on what your demon is, mm-hmm. but you never have a party of one. You're never alone. Right, right. I just pity anybody who's got a bear for a demon. Yeah, I encourage people to go and listen to uh, Elaine Boozler does a, a bit about going to a restaurant and asking for a party of one. And the and that's sort of like saying it's a party, even though you're by yourself is like the <laughs> saddest version of a party. Uh, so I encourage you to look up the uh, that it's from the 80s, but uh, I'm dating myself. Uh, so so then Boreal references this is sort of getting close to where he references crossing over. Mm hmm. And I was like, eh? And I was like, are we gonna, are we gonna, is this just being referenced? And then he kind of s- skulks around, goes into a dilapidated greenhouse, mm-hmm. and there it is. There yeah. it is, in all its shimmery glory. So shimmery. So, yeah, yes. very shimmery. Shimmery and s- thin and wispy yeah. and broken. It wasn't a clean square you know it yeah. wasn't it was like a, a slash it like a gash. damage yeah, yeah. It was a it crack looked... mm-hmm. almost yeah. like That's someone had a knife that was not very subtle it, <laughs> not subtle at all perhaps. <laughs> That's true. yes he walks through he passes through we see him pass through i'm just like my mind is kind of starting to melt at this point where i'm like where are we going like uh-huh. this it's the second episode of the series the yep. second yeah. and i got on the movie hardcore because in the opening moments they basically explain the whole multiple universe theory at the at, within the first three minutes of the movie right and i was like eh, i don't like that so now we're really seeing this opening this passageway it goes through and like here we are in regular oxford with buses and and, and a dude in like a yellow shirt like skateboarding and mm-hmm. i was like oh oh well, okay yes yeah, so boreal has a flannel. cell phone well, yeah, he does. He's a yeah. cell phone. And then he has some guy in a like flannel texting. comes and he's like drinking his little, you know, Demitasse. I'm like, what yeah. is happening here? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. is happening? Yeah, the cell phone threw me. And and he uh, he sits there and the starts texting. Yeah, I'm like, oh my God, what is happening? And he meets up with a, someone. Thomas. Oh, Thomas, right. Thomas, whoever yeah. that is. Whoever Thomas is. Mm. And he, they have some, he, he's looking for Grumman. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. He shows him a picture. He's like, oh, and they're like, well, he has a huge Osprey, so he shouldn't be too hard to find, you know, which is <laughs> right. kind of true. <laughs> it's like, right. How many people walking around with a giant Osprey? You know, that's going to stand out a little bit. Don't judge. But, you don't know his life. I don't know his life. That's right. <laughs> right. Um, but this all this plot and extra material. And I just want to, like, get back to Lyra and Mrs. Coulter. My I. I just was left with like a bunch of questions and I'm not sure what I want, you know, like why did Thomas know, why did Thomas have to know all the multi multiple world stuff, you know, like yeah, why, and demons, what, even demons, like why yeah, does he, know he knows them? everything about, about their world. Like why? I don't mm-hmm. think uh, Lord Boreal's assistant or, or his manservant, whatever he had in the books knew a thing. Boreal's not being careful at all. He's like, ah, oh, your coffee's better than ours. It's like, right. did you even, did you have to say that? You know, yeah. sh- be quiet. Show me your demon. <laughs> yeah. And he pokes out. Yeah. Pokes out of his <laughs> sleeve and the guy's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it was a weird it was it was weird to me. And then and then what the what Thomas says is, you know, you keep asking what we can do for your world or like looking about what, you know, our world could, but like, what can your world do for us? And it just felt odd to me that he was even making that kind of a demand or that kind of a statement, like, I, which felt to me also kind of out of character for Boreal. Like he wouldn't let anybody no. tell him what to do. I mean, even with the, you know, like even when the, when father McPhail was telling him stuff, he was just like, you know, step off a little bit. Not even, Right, and not even like in comparison to the book, in comparison to what we've already seen in the TV show. Mm-hmm. Right, he's right. not that guy. Yeah, you know, you're not you're not coming to me and and, and making demands of me. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I wasn't wasn't keen on that, and I, mean, I got to get more before I'm willing to judge. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was happy with the amount of of Boreal in this <laughs> in this episode. It was especially wondrous. the next scene. He's oh my handsome. gosh! In the, oh my goodness! At the oh, he party. Really sharp. Great uh, yeah. outlook. That was amazing. When the elevator opened and he's all leaning in the oh elevator, my I was God. like, oh, Joanna, I was just like, so beside herself. I was. Get me some <laughs> think, smell and salt. I think it's clear to me that he is getting his wardrobe from our world. Hmm. Yeah, that tuxedo. I mean, it he's looked wearing, like, like crushed velvet. <laughs> yeah, he has like wingtip shoes. Like, yeah. I think they're really making it clear that he's spending a lot of time in our world. Mm-hmm. And he's he enamored so with our world. Yes, and he yeah. was very familiar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, with with that. But it opens up a lot of questions. All this stuff, all these like side deals, all this discussion about it opens up so many questions about who we just read about, and specifically the research that's happening in in our world and mm-hmm. how Boreal needs it. It doesn't feel like there's as much of a need. The the more he's sort of like going through his day to day shenanigans, it feels less and less like he needs someone to be doing something for him like this, or he needs to find somebody doing that research. To be fair, he's only got access to two worlds. Right. Yes, just that's true. That. That's you true. Know, so he, he and the magisterium probably want, well, I mean, we know they want access to all of them. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's why he's doing the research. But they have Mrs. Culture on a pretty short leash at this point. And he, mm-hmm. you know, uh, she gets threatened, essentially. Uh, and she ain't real happy about that. No, she was not. She oh, gets no. she gets fiery. And that's when she gets mad. And, and it sort of leads to a really good scene between she and Lyra. And Lyra's, mm-hmm. Lyra whispers a lot in this episode. Uh, but she starts to liven up a little bit as the episode progresses. And she starts to kind of really really come into her own a little bit and she she pushes hard especially in that scene mm-hmm. that i guess we can talk about now yeah the um the this the scene when when after the the magisterium guys leave and uh lyra's you know immediately you know starts pushing at uh mrs coulter right away what about the purse mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know and that read very much like the book that that really played out very much like the book yes that was right out right out of the book mm-hmm. yeah there and was she- some assertiveness that wasn't there though in yes. the book that was and, and which worked i mean i think it worked because it showed how she was getting fed up um very clearly how she was getting fed up as opposed to letting somebody like literally pull her hair in the tub and her mm-hmm. just being like oh no I, you know like kind of blowing it off yeah um to this where she was like you're angry and you're still angry Mm-hmm. And it, and it made Mrs. Coulter like furious to have herself like be read because yeah. she's so careful she, and about she's what so, she yeah. puts out. She and that's about Lyra's to walk away. gift. She was she about was. to walk away yep. in that moment, and Lyra just pushed one more button. Yep, one more button, yep. and she snaps. And then she does kind of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and which was we've seen in the teasers, you know, so much of that moment. And Gold Monkey grabs onto Pan, and and all hell breaks loose. Oh, that's oh. terrible. Poor Pan. Poor Pan. He's changing around. He, I mean, his biggest form, he goes into the cat, right? The mm-hmm. big cat. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's his biggest form. But the Pine Martin, I think, is more of like a, a little more feisty. Yeah. Uh, and he kind of ends up there trying to fight and battle. But the monkey's just too dexterous and too strong and too old, you know, th- knows all the tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that, that battle lasts a little a little while. And, and Lyra is, is done in by it, really. Yeah. And Mrs. Coulter, I mean just looks so cold serene oh, yeah. like calm it, it all actually calmed her down you know right. she was mad up to that point right it was a release yeah because I, I she was, was able, say that. Yep. it was the first time in like 
I guess, you know, whatever the showtime was, an hour or two hours, that she had power again. You know, the Magisterium guys came in and they were in charge. Mm-hmm. You know, now she gets got to reassert herself. With, uh, and, and she got to, you know, here here's another change from the book that I thought was nutso. And um, I went into all caps in my notes. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, that happened, you know. <laughs> well, she just told her, you know, he's your daddy. Like, wow. Yeah, the Azrael reveal was another kind of like, like oh, yeah, you're right. right. It's like yeah. you kind of, it's like almost like a slap in the face. A failure you is know. a man and a failure is a father. She good delivered really well. That's yeah. that line. She's she's acting with capital A there too. Yep. Really strong performance. Yeah. See, you you guys are saying that you, that she isn't feeling and she's cold. And I don't I don't think that that's true at all. Certainly think, not here. I think but, she's yeah. just controlled. And I I'll, think I'll every once in a mm-hmm. while, I think every once in a while she loses control. And that's what Lyra said. You lost control. She's like, I didn't lose control. And she really kind of didn't. I mean, she was just kind of like Lyra go, you know, like she was just like kind of stern with Lyra when the magisterium came. Mm -hmm. Um, But she gets, you know, she's at one point after she has that confrontation with Lyra, she's like crying and she shocks herself that she's crying. She's just like, Mm -hmm. oh, like, I can't believe I'm letting myself. How silly of me to have let this get to me. Yeah. And and so I really do feel I, I mean, this is a much more empathetic in a different way, kind of Mrs. Coulter. I don't feel badly for her. Mm-hmm. But I understand her, I think, a little bit better. I think I think the complexity of her personality and how she relates to Lyra and what that situation is for her, it's very clear from the beginning in this episode, you know, at, at the Arctic Institute about just saying, like, look, there are men in, like, how many women do you see here? Mm-hmm. Like, they lay that out clear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and she's like, they will you know, berate you. She's like, I'll, I'll teach you that they won't, you know, they'll never be able to touch you. Right. And so like, I, so again, it's like, it's, it's that, I feel like she's just so super controlled so much of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I, I, yeah, I can see that. And I can, you know, she's certainly more human in this mm-hmm. than she is in the, in the books. Um, and even more than Nicole Kidman was, because yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's Nicole Kidman's superpower is to be able to, you know, have that detached mm-hmm. person, that deta- that super cold, mm-hmm. you know, character, and um, that's not that's not this Mrs. Holter. Oh no, she is yeah. she is giving. Hint. I mean, she she, and that's what you were saying, Alec. The way that her face changes, the little like, hmm, like I can't believe I just, you know. So when things happened in the movie, where at some point Mrs. Coulter is doing this desperate act. It didn't make it doesn't make sense in the movie because there's really no real feeling that she re- actually cares for Lyra. But mm-hmm. in here, you can see she just desperately wants for Lyra to have, I think, what she has without having to fight for it the way she fought for it, which I understand mm-hmm. as a woman. Like, I totally get that. Like, I totally get her saying, listen, let me help you. And I will. I've already, like, paved the way. Let me show you how to how to walk this road. But I've paved the way for you. So I in think that though, sense, you know, yeah, I just think that, that the problem here is that not so much that she wants to help Lyra, that she just wants Lyra to do this. That she's like, do what I say and you will get this. Right. I'm not helping you. I'm just changing you. Well, and that's what, her dream. It's what Pan right. said, too. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't want to change to be here. Right. You know, and, and there wasn't so much that she wanted to help Lyra as she wanted to make for Lyra's sake, she wanted to make Lyra into, into what she wanted her to be. Oh, sure. And that's like, that's every, like when you live vicariously through your child, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You have to be a great, you know, sports kid because I was, I, I then I feel like I'm great. And I feel, so yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't mean because she has affection for Lyra and is doing to legitimately help her, but she's doing it, I think in what she thinks is helping. Like, do you know what I mean? Like it's her, like to her, she thinks she's helping Lyra to do this good thing and she's not i mean yeah. she, we, we can see that she's not but yeah. i think to her she is just trying to say like you know this is what i want for you mm-hmm. and liar's like i don't want that well i guess that and i think that's kind of pers- like elucidated when she when um she says the thing about uh i don't know if that was the right word in any case um 
it's it's made clear when she says the thing about Lord Azrael and about how he's a failure as a father, mm-hmm. as a man, and as a father. You know, he never did anything for you. I'm here to do this. And I, you know, since we're, we're cool with spoilers, you know, I kind of feel like that whole scene, if Lyra were an adult, she would have gotten that whole thing. She would have made all the necessary connections. I, I think that that was one of those times where she's 12. There's and some didn't innocence get it. there. Yeah. Yeah. She, you know, and she, even, you know, we were talking about her being molded and they, they give Lyra enough of, a sense that things aren't right, but she's kind of going begrudgingly going along with some of the things. And pan has a very similar line from the book that he says in the, in the show, which is kind of like, she's, she's molding you to be more like, you you don't want to be molded like this. He's, he's sort of like trying to put her back on the path. And I, I feel like the, the entire time with that Roger hunt, that's in the back of her mind, she's never comfortable. She's never fully comfortable in in this apartment she's never feels mm-hmm. comfortable whereas i think in the book there's a little more comfort she's yeah. kind of on board a little bit more i think because they had to condense this a little bit that they gave her a little nagging you know earworm that was kind of like bothering her about what things are and that's why when she hears the sounds you know at, at the middle of the night she's really just it's like she's not comfortable there She's like, what is what is that? What is that? And they're just like hunting around for that. And then we can go. I guess we can go in to talk about how the monkey is moving around this apartment. Yeah, he's got his own secret like monkey tunnels. tunnels. <laughs> secret monkey tunnels. He's, he's John McCain, he's like, <laughs> right? From like Die Hard, like he's just crawling through. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I was oh just imagining God. the monkey like with like a lighter the lines from Die, Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I kept thinking of. I was like, how are you, John McLean? Okay. (laughs) Yeah. But it's perfect because it it just shows like literally he has to be, he has to sneak. Yeah. Around. He's made to sneak, made to sneak. He's made to sneak. But I think he also like, I feel like when Lyra finds him in there, he is like, when, when she opens the door and he looks kind of like a, like scared, I think it's because he thinks it's Mrs. Coulter. Not that he thinks it's Lyra. Like he, I don't think he was supposed to be in there, and I think he's she's he's she slapped him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Not when, a, when, I, when he was scared, I I, I was talking about the uh, the time at the end of the episode when she's coming out of the uh, when Lyra goes into the study, and um, the monkey and, and Mrs. Coulter and the monkey are in the elevator together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah we're sort of talking about both of them at the same so simultaneously. I okay. think we're just talking about both both points. But he, yeah, she. So she, Mrs. Coulter goes down to the basement, and that's where I guess the gobblers have brought all the kids. This must be maybe their final stop before they leave. And they have the scene right out of the book where she takes dictation of their, their um, uh, messages to their family and their friends. And you know, the reveal, there's a real significant reveal about she finds out who Roger is and mm-hmm. that he's writing Lyra a note. And there's a real, it makes it even more gross that she takes them and just burns them. Yeah. You know, it's like she knows that's the one that that's the one that Lyra likes. You know, you know that how, that's how much she cares about Lyra, which is very little. Right. Mm-hmm. And and, and she, Roger's letter was a big f you to Mrs. Coulter. Of course, hundred so percent. Like, he wrote so it himself. Fantastic. I yeah. know it was so great. He's like, give me He's that like, pen. Give me the paper. You never guess who's taking me. <laughs> <laughs> all my love. Oh, I know. All my love. I was like, dang, Roger. Yeah, I believe you'll jump out of a sledge. Heck yeah. yeah. You are. You are. Per- yeah, you're perfect. Yeah, Roger's gonna have a good time slapping her later. <laughs> And she, you know, she burns the letters and she gives a little, uh, right after she does that too, another one of those. And the the monkey's a little bit wide eyed there too, a little bit. Yeah. Kind of like whatever. So while she goes down to the basement, Lyra gets a window of opportunity to just walk over and go and she's like, you know, Pan's like, let's go check, you know, Pan actually eggs her on here to go into the study, but the study's locked. So this is where we get to see the John McClane stuff, you know. Uh, to go and check out what uh, what she's hiding in there, because right for the desk, open sees all the the general oblation board stuff, which is oh, just sitting out. And then she, she sees finds all the, file. the things. All the things. You see all the design for yeah. something, a machine. 
that is with a little bunny rabbit and a yeah, person a in it. It's like, is that a person in their demon? She's like, what the heck is this? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah, when, when, um, I th- when she realized what was happening, or actually she never really realizes what's happening. She's just horrified the whole time, but, mm-hmm. um, she's horrified and confused. But, you know, when, when it starts to dawn on her that this is culture is up to some mess. Yeah. You know, I, I just felt she had this look on her face. It was just like just sheer terror. You're like, what is it? it? Just Yeah, there's a real kind of shock to it. Yeah. She doesn't have much time to really take it in. You know, Pan's on lookout as like a moth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and when the when the elevator starts moving again, they got to get out of there quickly. This is a very tense. You know, this they released oh this my gosh. early. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you can see it. We posted it on our um, our Instagram, but it was a, it's a very intense sequence. And you know, she has to get back to her um, uh, her room pretty quickly, and uh, just barely makes it. Oh, uh, I was so beside myself in that scene. I know it was it was awful. And the trickle oh of sweat running down her forehead mm-hmm. while Mrs. Culture was talking, I was like, and the, and the monkey also just runs right into her room, like expecting yeah. that she's up to something. Yep, yep. You know, and he's like looking around, like knows something's up. So she has a little bit. She messes with the elitiometer a little bit too, uh, kind of desperately trying mm-hmm. to get the elitiometer to just do something, and it does wiggle a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. That's pretty much all we get at this point. Um, a little wiggle. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's certainly hopeful that it can help her, but it has so far not helped her at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they, the, the party is ends up being kind of an interesting sequence because she does. She's delivering champagne, and she gets to meet our journalist, Travis, Adele Starminster. I know. Your favorite I, I name. I thought of you. I know. It's such a nice name. I know. And it's a shame that she's only in it for two freaking minutes. Yeah. I and mean, her, especially she, you've got Georgina Campbell, who I love. She's great. And I have since, you know, Black Mirror. And they ha- only have her in for two, like two minutes. Mm-hmm. So I, that was like a waste to me. But um, I love the bit when she's she pulls Lyra out. And um, she says, you know, she is the oblation board. The look on Lyra's face as all the pieces fall together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. She's also that the, is awesome. Yeah, she this is, is the so moment awesome. she's she's the most well lit in the entire scene. I think there's a real like realization mm-hmm. and they light her in a way that she's like really absorbing this information. She's bright and she has daylight on her. She's not inside. She's on the, she's on a lanai. Uh-huh. And she's feeling that that she's there's a real realization. Yeah, you're right. Daphne Keene is like amazing in that mm-hmm. scene yeah. where she's that subtle kind of realization. And then she's like, I have to she's got to do something. Yeah. You know, she can't be there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then she, Mrs. Coulter finds Adele there, hands her off to Lord Boreal. And Lord Boreal takes her down on the lift, so which means that Lyra was not able to take the lift because she had yep. to go back for the alethiometer. Right. Climbs out the window, which was I was hoping she'd go down the window. I didn't want her to go down the elevator. Right. I'm glad she got. I'm glad she was crawling mm-hmm. around outside. Yeah. So Adele and and Lord Boreal go into a car, and Lord Boreal oh, grabs her little moth and then swish. We talked about the fragility of her demon on that episode. We did. Mm -hmm. We were like, ooh, is it so nerve wracking to have a tiny little demon that's so fragile? And sure enough, he puts it in her hand. She's like freaked out that he's touching it. So there's a nice moment there where they're they're reminding you that you're not supposed Mm -hmm. to touch demons. Mm -hmm. And then he just and she. Oh, yeah. Out. Yeah. Yeah. She dies. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like the taboo has been all that stands between people with like little fragile demons and death. It's just like a murderer. I mean, like, right? Yeah. There, there's oh, yeah. a you know, there's a social contract, right? We, I, yeah, you know, that's we it. We don't kill each other. Same thing with the demons. Yeah, right. that's crazy to me, though. I mean, like, somebody with with a, a more robust demon, you know, could last a lot longer. But somebody yeah. with a, a like a moth or or even the wasp that we saw the the folks from the, the guy from Magitarium had. Yeah. You know, those people have demons that are to uh, a second away from death. All a the can time. of raid. Well, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Like Stelmaria like, is not going to, like, is going to yeah. stand, stand up to a lot of abuse. You know, she right. can fight. 
Right. right. She's big. Right. Or well, even yeah. like the servant wolf, like the big dogs or the wolves, mm-hmm. you know, they're strong and robust. Mm-hmm. It just shows how important that so that taboo is. Yes. And, and then how easily he breaks that. Mm-hmm. Right. Without even a second thought. He yeah, absolutely he does it with very little feeling. And then he opens up like, his hand and looks at it, but it didn't mm-hmm. disappear. That's it what I yeah, tough, there was it no dust away. It was so just I wonder dead. if Adele's actually dead in this. Or I mean, she's could, just injured or yeah, she passed she out. Be, yeah. Could he have mm-hmm. just, you know, damaged it so much that she passed out and she'll be back later? I feel like we're never gonna see her again. I don't know. Oh, yeah. no. It felt like she was dead. Agreed. Yeah. <sighs> So, uh, so Lyra bolts and yep. she runs across the roof and across the little, you know, gangway and you have Mrs. Culture, kind of another uh, great look for her where she kind of looks out the window <laughs> right. and the monkey's looking out the window and she, uh, she gets down to the street level and there's, there's a nice moment there towards the night where she's, it's cold mm-hmm. and it's right out of the book too. You know, she curls up in a door, like a doorway and she's cold. Mm-hmm. It's right out of the book. Yeah. Um, but we see the creepy fox. What yeah. is up with that fox? Does Why that does fox it draw have... in other every, demons? Every demon, every kid, is child demon, at least sucked, sucked just right in. Wants to, yeah, just is drawn to it, and I don't understand. I, it's crazy weird. Yeah. Because wasn't there like a weird a sound? Wasn't there a weird sound mm-hmm. that was happening too? And they're like, "What is that sound?" Uh-huh. They heard the sound, and then when they looked, then they saw almost like a siren song. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. was, I don't know what's going on there. And the demon was pretty far away from its person. Unless they were right around the corner. Well, I mean, it was here, but and then he, the person who grabbed her grabs her from behind. Yeah. So it's all the way at the other end of the alley. Uh-huh. And, and he, the guy that grabbed her is behind her where the door is. Like from, you know, the yeah. other side of the alley. Yeah, this could be a, a piece of uh, exposition that someone says. It's like the the members of the oblation board have had to train to separate their de- you know, get get up to twenty yards of separation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who who knows? You know, I don't know if they're going to do that or not. But they, it seems like they've got a little extra distance. You know, it's like Navy SEAL training. <laughs> yeah, like Lyra's. You know, Lyra and Pan are right next to each other basically all the time. Yeah. They're they're no more than a you know ten feet. Mm-hmm. But the, the adults do seem even when the the Egyptians are sort of on the hunt and they go and they're close to that first location where they they just miss the kids, the ones that have the birds let their birds go and the birds like fly off. Yeah, you know. And I was like, how far are they flying? I'm, I'm always just worried about that. How far? Where are they going? Are they how are they going too far? Uh, so that there's a little fuzziness here in the show about like how far can they go and what's the distance and we're not getting like a wide camera angle about how far the bird is away from them. I'm just trying to sort of, you know, let that go and mm-hmm. enjoy the show. You know, that's, so, that's one thing about going right into this show after re- having read these two books and you're like, I just like, you know what? I can watch this for what it is. And without adaptation, if you just put the book on the screen, it, I think there's something about translating it that, right. Is supposed to make it special, like something different. It's supposed mm-hmm. to, you know, they enliven certain elements and bring certain characters forward and 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 remove characters and combine characters. Um, that makes for the book reader, it makes an exciting experience. Like I felt like, you know, Harry Potter and the Chamber or Harry Potter, the first Harry Potter film, was just a direct translation of the book in some ways. Yeah. Where it 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 not I mean it was fine but it's just very flat on the screen because it's exactly the thing you already read and they're just showing you the same thing and basically the same way you imagined it. Mm-hmm. So making these subtle tweaks makes it maybe enjoyable or may- maybe people are incensed. I've been avoiding social media, so I can only- maybe people are mm-hmm. furious about these changes. I'll find out after we're done with this podcast. <laughs> but um, are you? was there anything that was like, I don't like this, I wish they didn't do this? Rewind. Like I said, the only thing that I had the issue with was uh, Boreal um, jumping through worlds already. Yeah, that's big um, for me. That I, I'm not. I don't know that I like that. I really don't. Um, we'll see ne- by next week how I feel, but uh, for now, yeah, not so much. Yeah, it's the second episode. Yeah, it's very early to give that up. Yeah, yeah. it's cool to see it, and if they, it, I, I, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they're able to tie that together and make it work um and if i hadn't 
read the books at all, what what would my reaction be to him walking? I'd be, you know, I, I would have been, we are gasping because why did they do it so soon? Maybe mm-hmm. someone else is gasping like there's another world and they're freaking out right now for a different reason. Right. Yeah. So maybe there's elements to both. If we can sort of appreciate it for the change, it does exist. There is a, you know, he does go between worlds. Mm-hmm. It just seems it's brought brought in very early. And they do tell us that in the opening crawl of the first episode. Yeah. Multiple worlds. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. It's yeah. a thing. But like not necessarily going between them yet yeah. or like how that's how that works. Right. Um, any other um, gut reactions to anything? I, I think I've covered it. I, my first note is just cars, exclamation point. I don't know why that was that was there. I was so you know, ex- excited or surprised by that. The only yeah. other thing that stood out for me was um, the golden monkey. Uh, in this case, it wasn't mute. It screeched like a real animal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so far, that's the only demon that does that. Yeah. So well, something the, to think about. You know, the snake doesn't talk. The snake just, you know, slithers oh, yeah. and makes mm-hmm. S sounds. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And, 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 and uh, <laughs> uh, the master's uh, crow or raven, like caws, like a raven doesn't speak. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's, there's, there's some, there's some, you know, Pan is is the most verbal by far, oh, yeah. uh, obviously. But you know what? What's I, I wanted to something that stood out to me is in the movie, the trans. This is why a series translation works so much better for books. Is like we in the movie we're 15 minutes into the movie maybe at this point, and we're already two hours into the show, and we're not even we haven't even left London yet. You know, mm-hmm. we're still we're still like dealing with the stuff that's going on in London. They're really letting this breathe, even though some of it, they're moving things around and expanding. We're still in the same space. They're really not rushing here. Mm-mm. They're taking some time. How, I mean, many, I, I, how I, many episodes are we getting? This season? Eight. Eight. Okay. Which doesn't feel like enough now. No. Now, no, that we're, now that we're two in and we haven't seen any of our favorites, I'm like, when are we going to see our, you know, when are we going to see all this? There's so much other stuff. Mm-hmm. So much stuff. We did see a bear skull. It's getting close. We saw a bear skull today. Was that in the uh, the Arctic? That was Institute? in the Arctic Institute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's getting close. Well, we very much appreciate all our wonderful listeners, and we have a lot of new ones. And thank you for thank you for joining us. Um, we expected that we'd get a few new listeners when the show started, and we were not wrong. Travis, actually, we were the one that's been singing that from day one. You're like, you just wait, just wait until the show comes out. <laughs> this is with me. Um, I wanted to take a quick moment before we sign off here to mention a couple of our sister podcasts. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to shout out the smaller podcasts. I have noticed that big media outlets all have started podcasts about the show. Big ones. Vulture and NPR and like all these, which fine. I love NPR. We all love NPR, but I wanted to shout out some of the smaller, smaller folks like us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just an alphabetical order. Uh, Demon Cast, Demons and Dust, Measures of Truth, um, Extraneous, His Dark Materials podcast, and uh, that's it. Any yeah. of the, any other ones you guys are aware of? There's one um, called Girls Gone Canon who they cover a lot of stuff, not just a lot of stuff. A lot yeah. of stuff. So they're talking about his dark materials too, but they don't. They're not specifically his dark mm-hmm. materials. But yeah. a lot of our they're like Twitter buddies now. We're all Twitter buddies. Yeah, I got to spend some time listening to Girls Gone Canon because uh, they sound like they're 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 not a cat, kind of a podcast I'm really into. So I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, and apparently um, I. I, we may be the only ones that don't curse uh, significantly. <laughs> There's a lot of curse. <laughs> we should do an explicit version. We'll record another explicit version. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's because we're American. You know, I know that there we're are a lot Brits. of the, the Brits, you know, they, they let it fly. And, you know, it's our I mean, puritanical roots. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Although I do curse in regular life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I do like a sailor. Yeah, yeah. Hi, yeah. High five, virtual high five. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm protecting my teacher image by not by just saying effing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst. That's, that's probably the worst I'll do. I have such a little moth demon. 
Oh, no, no, Travis. I want you to have a bigger one. I'm too worried about the little ones. <laughs> I want a big, just a, a hearty one, a big one. All right. I'm feeling the lemur is too small now. I need to go for a bigger one. Yeah. Yeah, we all need, like, armored animals. Got to get the aardvarks out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, we appreciate everyone listening, um, and we'll continue this journey together. We're episode two. The uh, the idea of the North is at a close. Next week, we saw the teaser for it, and I'm a little psyched. I'm a little yeah, there's, there's some stuff going on. Yeah, you know, Lyra's been snatched, so yeah. we'll have to see what happens. Does and she get away? Strap. You know, she's ready. She's all, she's got a gun, man. Yes, she has a gun and there's a yeah. guy in her apartment. She's going to shoot. What is happening? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tell you, they're good at cliffhangers. Yeah, they are. They're, they're doing a good job. They they like, who does not want to come back? Roger in the cage and then, mm-hmm. and then now Lyra it's... getting snatched. Yep. Yeah. So yep. the next one, hmm, what will the next one be? We'll, we'll do a prediction. Uh, well, maybe we'll put up a prediction. Uh, um, yeah. Poll on Twitter. Who will be kidnapped at the end of next episode? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Appreciate everybody. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. See you later.